What's up guys? Dynamite Man here, coming up with another update video for you all. I'm standing out by the lake today. It's currently 4.40 p.m. on Saturday, November 23rd, 2012. Um, just kind of wanted to talk about a few things today. It's kind of doing a little bit of a last minute all this stuff before the month's all up and everything been getting super super busy this past month the past this last week is going to be really really important to me as far as uh, getting finals done getting stuff finished in time to uh for um what's the word i'm looking for um graduation next uh this coming may but um it would take about five, ten minutes to kind of reflect on life and everything. Talk about some Zelda games. Um, just kind of been uh, uh, thinking about a lot about uh, the whole Ocarina of Time thing that uh, um, I brought up in a previous video. Basically, that idea is a um, is that there seems to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't talk, I can't think, um, can't, uh, structure sentences properly. Uh, basically what I'm going to talk about is the, the split timeline theory a little bit more in detail and some of my thoughts that I have on that. Uh, so there's this whole idea of, um, of Ganon winning the fight in Ocarina of Time and there's a split that heads down that way basically what that uh, idea spreads towards is that um uh something that no one really thought about in general um it's the whole concept of Link actually losing uh the world's most easiest fight in the game um this actually branches off a third arm into the timeline theory that no one has ever really thought about and that is if the hero were to lose where does the story go story goes actually um to the legend of zelda the 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 first game that's the name of the game it's the legend of zelda there's nothing else okay anyway you get it so um so basically what happens is that uh the three pieces of the Triforce are united, and they are, you know, for the first time ever, they are activated within their respected heroes, if you will. Um, what this means is that uh, that each power is granted upon whoever uses them. Power to Ganondorf, uh, wisdom to Zelda, and courage to Link. And with that, um, with Ganon actually beating Link, the Triforce of Courage is um, relinquished. It is uh, given up to Ganon, who in turn shatters it into eight different pieces, where um, Link returns to Hyrule probably within the same year or decade or whatever, and uh, tries to reclaim his power of the Triforce, which is courage again. Um, so, yeah, but what he, uh, I'm assuming that it's also, um, adult Link that does this because he's, uh, basically, um, it would have to be within the same, that same timeline because he is not free to do whatever he wishes from then on because, uh, it would be kind of suggested that the the Master Sword is, uh, forfeited as well because, um, his, he gains a new sword at the beginning of the game. It's dangerous to go alone, take this. Um, so, yeah, and this sword is actually different from the Master Sword. It actually shoots beams of itself at enemies, which is a very strange a feature in a sword is well it's the first game what, can, what else can you do about it anyway so link uh returns to hyrule or what would have been the 
area of Hyrule had Ganon lost um, this uh, concept of there being a wilderness, an open field, uh, wastelands even, where Hyrule once stood suggests that um, Link probably uh, thought that the Kingdom Hyrule was still there and Ganon moved it northward further. This means that um, Ganon also has con had control over the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the power of the Triforce and well, all 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 three uh, powers of the Triforce and as well as uh, the kingdom itself. Um, of course, Zelda is still encased within her um, her fifty ruby piece uh, prison not being released and so Link must um, go and save her. Um, another thing that's really interesting to talk about that I wanted to bring up uh, quickly also is that um, there are uh, there is a um, in the water temple there's right before Link is able to get the upgrade to his hookshot he wanders into a room with a lake uh, not unsimilar to this, except that he can surprisingly walk on the water for whatever reason. But, um, an, an island in the middle of it, and when he, he, Link, uh, goes and checks the doors to see that they are sealed, he turns around and sees Dark Link. Dark Link is the, uh, evil manifestation that lives within... Uh, that, oh, well, I guess Ganon, let me back up a little bit, it's basically what Ga Ganon sends out Dark Link to destroy Link because he matches Link in power, wisdom, and everything else that Link possesses. Um, we know this because of a certain special character in the game that no one really uh, gives credit to a whole lot. And, um... And that's something that uh, Ocarina of Time really kind of opens up the whole world of Hyrule for um, for the gamer to uh, see. Uh, and that character is Navi. Navi is a um, very strange fairy indeed. Uh, whether she uh, acquired her knowledge to the, through the Great Deku Tree or if she is a reincarnation of Zelda or something, I have no clue. It's just my speculations on the subject to begin with anyway. But, um, Navi seems to know an awful lot about, um, the world of Hyrule. And just the fact that, um, what, you know, you learn so much about the, uh, the enemies in the area and uh, certain concepts of the world as well. And my point being is that, like, you know, you learn what a wolf was is in this in this game, or what a Redead is, or a Stalfos, or I, I, I could go on, you know, but, uh, but Navi seems to have a, a recollection of who Dark Link is from a different, even though this is his, technically his first appearance in the game altogether, she seems to have a, a memory of him, and it brings me to kind of um, talk about a another concept of the Legend of Zelda is that um, there are only two other characters that could um, that kind of disappear off the face of the world after their main appearance, and those two characters are uh, Girahim and Aghanim. Uh Both the characters uh, pretty much disappear. I mean, with the exception of Fi, or however you pronounce her name from Skyward Sword. Um, being the exact duplicate of Girahim, meaning that they're both manifestations of separate swords um, meant to fight one another. Um, but Girahim just seems to be like this character that's just well, freaky for one. He's a really well-developed character, meaning that there's probably some sort of idea that kind of revolves around him, but his name sounds and is spelled surprisingly close to Aghanim's and Aghanim is the wizard from A Link to the Past. Um, I have no real uh, evidence to prove this but uh, I happen to think that they are one and the same person. 
maybe maybe Gearham was sent to return and do the bidding of Ganon a second time in the form of Aghanim. And once he was defeated again, he was um, reduced to nothing but a wisp or a spirit of his, of his former self, meaning that he becomes Dark Link. Um, because he, Dark Link returns countless times after Ocarina of Time, just not any time before, as far as my knowledge is um, allowing me to recall. Um, just sort of an idea that I kind of... Um, kind of put together the past couple of weeks and well so basically what I'm what I'm trying to get at is that Dark Link is the evil manifestation of the sword that was created to fight the Master Sword uh, if that makes any sense at all um well those are my thoughts um for this update um uh, this episode whatever the hell you want to call it this has been quite a long episode for one um i've never really gone past a my uh a 10 minute line we're heading up towards uh 11 20 by my count um so i guess that wraps everything up this has been dynamite man zgi if you like this part subscribe give me a rating leave a comment plus video response do whatever the hell you want and i will see you guys later